Hi, this is Chris Chovlin with another pre-lecture uh, presentation. Um, this time we're going to talk about the transformation of states in system diagonali diagonalization, which is uh, um, a subject that allows us to basically take one state-space model, convert it into another, just using simple linear matrix algebra. So, um, if as we already said in a few lectures ago, if you have a state-space model, the transfer function, that's the input-output relationship, the dynamics that affect the input-output behavior of the system as a whole, um, does not change if you change the actual structure of the A, B, C, D matrices, providing that they're re representing the same uh, dynamics, of course. So to we can convert one canonical form into another one just by application of simple matrix operations, and we will preserve that input-output relationship. Um, if we try and convert into a normal form transfer function, and that's the one where you have the eigenvalues effectively on the diagonal of the A matrix, then the actual system transformation, the actual transfer function, sorry, the input-output relationship can easily be calculated and we can get the time responses very easily, um, just with, with the minimum of effort. Uh, but to be able to do that, we need to know what the eigenvalues of the A matrix are so that we can put the, the A matrix into the normal canonical form. And so um, once we've done that, if we have the system's eigenvalues, we can determine the system response based on the eigenvalues. Um, and even if we have a system which is not in normal form, we can use this what's called similarity transforms to, to go into the normal form and, and work out what the actual response would be. In the, in the in the original form. So it's a useful technique and uh, we're going to talk about that in the lecture with some examples. So this is what I propose to cover uh, briefly in this present introductory presentation. Let's first of all talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, this might be this probably will be revision from from maths courses that you have taken in the past. Then we'll talk about system transformation and how that how that approach works. We'll prove that the system transformation does not change the eigenvalues and then we'll see how we can use it to diagonalize the state space model into the normal form. And then we'll use that normal form to so solve general state equations. So we'll start off by defining eigenvectors. Uh, eigenvectors of a matrix are vectors which satisfy this equation here. So we're looking for values of lambda that s ensure that a times xi, wh where xi is the is the eigenvector, is equal to some multiple of the of the lambda times xi. Uh, so that's called an eigenvalue, and the xi is the eigenvector. And of course, we're looking for non-trivial solutions, so we, we don't allow the solution where x i is, is zero, because that would be a trivial one. So th th that's the definition of eigenvalues. So let's uh, see what uh, how that helps us, uh, what that actually means. So what it actually means, um, if you take a um, any kind of sort of matrix equation. Ax, where x is a vector and a is a matrix, square matrix, then the result of that effectively is going to be a line in the space, this, the x space of the system. So in this particular illustration, we've just got two states, so it's two dimensional, but of course, in, in general, this would be n dimensional space. But anyway, the, uh, the definition of x is it's a vector. And the definition of a times x is, is it's also a vector. For the special case where we have this eigenvalue, eigenvector relationship, the ax and x are what are called collinear, so they have the actually the same direction, the same, not necessarily the same magnitude, but certainly the same direction in the x space. Um, and so eigenvalue, eigenvectors are special, special vectors which have this property when they're multiplied by a matrix they, they produce a, a vector which is in the same direction as the original vector. 
So, um, because of the equation that we started with, um, lambda i then, we can write down the equation for lambda i, just by rearranging the equation slightly, and then lambda i minus a times x must equal zero. Um, basically that's just a rearrangement of this equation. And we're using i here as the identity matrix so that we can do effectively uh, multiplication by one in the vector space. And if we solve for x, um, we get a non-zero solution if this term here, given that x is not zero, if this term is not zero as well, and that's not zero, providing the determinant of this is equal to zero. So basically this gives us the equations from which the eigenvalues can be found. Now if you are if you are paying attention, if I was re to replace that land sorry, let me get a pen. If I was to replace that vector by by S, you can see S I minus A, we've seen that before in the context of transfer functions and this is a characteristic equation. The characteristic equation SI minus A is equal to zero. The characteristic equation of the system and as we've already said that determines the poles of the system and therefore the response of the system. So our eigenvalues and, uh, and, and the poles are very closely related, in fact they're the same thing as far as um, we're concerned. So that's a useful uh, thing to, to note. So in order to find the eigenvectors of a system we uh, find we start off with a matrix A, it has to be square. We use the determinant de lambda i minus a in order to determine the uh, values of lambda and then we put those values into this equation lambda xi equals lambda i xi to find the eigenvectors. And there's, new, there's not usually a unique solution to this because essentially if we scaled any vector then we only change the length we don't change the direction therefore there's uh, there's probably a uh, there are infinite number of possible eigenvectors and you get a free choice to choose what, what you want to use and we'll use a work example in the class to illustrate how this process works so once we have the eigenvectors then we can uh, move on and we can start talking about system transformation and this basically says that if we have a, a static set of state equations, dx by dt equals ax plus bu, where of course x is the x's here are vectors, as, as are the u's in general. If we make a simple transformation, x equals tw, then if we substitute tw for x in that equation, we get dtw by dt is equal to a tw plus b u and of course t is assumed to just be a, a constant matrix matrix of constant value so this doesn't change the dynamics of the system essentially we can factor out the t therefore so we get t dw by dt is a t w plus b u and if we then pre-multiply by that t the inverse of t effectively dividing by t in matrix space then dw by dt is t minus 1 a t w plus t minus 1 b u and this this equation here is a new system matrix with the states equal to w so we can always take a we can always transform one set of state equations into another set of state equations by doing this simple transformation t minus 1 a t and of course we the t minus 1 also affects the b matrix as we've shown there so that's a useful uh, result, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, and uh, similarly, if we look at the output equation, simply replacing x by tw gives us a, a, a variation of the output equation, c tw plus du. So this gives us a transformed model, basically another state space model, this time with the states defined as w. So dw by dt is a dash w plus b dash u, and so on where th these equations here represent the transformed vectors and of course d is not changed by the transformation. So that's a useful result because it allows us actually to, as we'll see in the next few slides, it allows us to convert um, 
First of all, it allows us to convert systems into canonical forms if we need to, but also it allows us to convert, in particular, any transfer f any system into the canonical normal form where we have diagonal a state space matrix with diagonals on the A matrix equal to the eigenvectors. And this is very useful when we need to solve the system of equations to solve the differential equations that the state space represent. So a few more words on this. Um, T minus one AT is called a similarity transformer transform. Um, and it's called that because the eigenvalues are preserved through the transform, which you can prove by sh showing this. Ax is lambda x. So t minus 1 Ax is lambda t minus 1 of x. And then if x is Tw, then t minus 1 Atw is equal to lambda t minus 1 Tw. t minus 1 Tw is just unity, because this is just effectively uh, t divided by t. So this becomes unity. So t minus 1 at times w is equal to lambda w. So we have the same um, set of eigenvalues. The eigenvalues themselves do not change by, uh, by uh, using this operation. And that's a useful, I said, a useful property. So if we want to diagonalize diagonalize a state space model, make it its normal form, then what we can do is we can choose the eigenvectors to be the T matrix. So if we take the eigenvectors, each one of these representing lambda, so lambda x1 goes with lambda1 and so on. We produce the matrix which represents the, the eigenvectors, then AT is equal to T lambda and solving that for lambda gives us lambda equals t minus 1 at. So if we've got any a, a matrix and we multiply it by its eigenvector matrix, pre-multiply it by the inverse of the eigenvector matrix, we will get a matrix which has lambdas on the uh, diagonal, or the vectors on, on the diagonal. <coughs> So if we have that, then as we showed in the previous lecture, which was, the slides were lecture 16, but I think it was contact hour 22 or something, certainly before Easter, then we, uh, we could show, we could determine a solution of a state equation if we have the system in diagonal form. So if we use the eigenvalues, eigenvectors to transform a model in state space form, we can uh, convert it to normal form. We can then choose the initial states to be equal to omega naught or w naught is t minus one of x naught, and then the original states can be found by using x equals tw. And that will be an example that we'll show you in the uh, in the class. Um, we'll work through an example like that. So that's uh, essentially where I wanted to to stop for today. Um, there are some slides. We'll, we'll actually work through some examples in the classroom um, to, to make this more concrete, but essentially I wanted to cover tho those sub subjects in this session today. And so we'll see you in, in class. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you soon.